If we open this valve right now, without thinking, you know that these particles will distribute themselves equally between the two chambers. I think everyone knows that. However, the why is interesting, as it's both simple and complex at the same time. This is a video about the most fundamental law in physics, or as we like to call it, the physics of randomness. Suppose you want to toss a coin once. The probability of it being a head is half equals 0.5. So out of the two possibilities, heads or tails, you can confidently say that the outcome is random. If you toss it 100 times, the probability of getting all heads is about 10 to the power minus 30. In other words, it's nearly impossible. One can also show that the probability of getting half the number of tosses as heads and the other half as tails after tossing the coin 1 million times is nearly 1 to the power 28. In other words, in this case, it's simply impossible to not get it. This can be summarized by one beautiful sentence. The summation of many random events can give a seemingly non-random one. Now consider a closed flask that has 1 billion atoms and is connected to a closed and empty flask through a valve. Initially, the atoms are all gathered in one flask. When we open the valve and give it enough time, we'll see that there's approximately an equal number of atoms in both flasks. And this brings us back to the initial question, why? To answer this question, one must introduce the notion of multiplicity. Multiplicity, in simple terms, is the number of ways you can arrange the states that you have amongst the available platforms. For example, you have two baskets, platforms, and four apples, states. And the apples are labeled one, two, three, and four. You can place three apples in one basket, say one, three, and four, order doesn't matter, and one apple in the other. Or you can place all four apples in one basket and no apples in the other. However, the arrangement that yields the highest multiplicity, as in the number of ways you could distribute the apples amongst the baskets, is if you place two apples in one basket and two in the other. If you place apples one, two, or one, three, or one, four, or two, three, or two, four, or three, four in one basket, you'll get six total ways to arrange the apples in that basket. If you place three apples in one basket and one apple in the other, you'll get four total ways to arrange the apples in that basket. The equal distribution of apples amongst the baskets gives us more ways to arrange these apples. Using this concept in the flask of two chambers and considering only four particles in the first chamber, according to the above case, the four molecules will most probably separate equally between the two chambers, since this has the maximum multiplicity. But why will this system move towards the state with the highest multiplicity? The key behind the answer to this question is a notion we previously explained, randomness. The molecules move completely randomly inside the system, and thus there's no reason why they would prefer a chamber on the other. So every molecule has a 50% chance to be in the left chamber and a 50% chance to be in the right one. This is the essence of the law of maximum multiplicity. Wait, how does the state with three in one chamber and one in the other have more possibilities. It doesn't, of course. We can't combine three by one and one by three configurations when giving multiplicity since the two are distinguishable. So it is one, four, six, four, and one. Now the notion of randomness tells us that no single possibility is favored over the other, meaning that they all acquire the same weight of occurrence. So the state of maximum number of possibilities, multiplicity will naturally occur. If this is not clear, you'll certainly imagine it in this next physical model. According to the above numbers, there are 16 possible arrangements of the system, six plus eight plus two. Let's say that we've opened the valve at time t equals zero minutes and left it for 60 minutes. If we have 16 possibilities with equal probabilities of existing by the notion of randomness, each state will acquire an average of 60 over 16 equals 3.75 minutes. So the system of a 2 by 2 distribution will exist for 3.75 times 6 equals 22.5 minutes. On the other hand, the systems of 3 by 1 and 1 by 3 distributions will exist for 3.75 times 4 equals 15 minutes each. 
And finally, the systems of a 4x0 and 0x4 distributions will exist for 3.75 times 1 equals 3.75 minutes. You can see that the system will spend most of its time in the state of equal distribution, which has the most multiplicity. However, if our system was in the order of 10 to the 23 molecules, we can confidently say that the whole 60 minutes would correspond to an equal distribution. I haven't mentioned entropy yet, but as you've probably noticed, this video focuses on multiplicity. This is to show you that the real meaning behind entropy lies in multiplicity. Entropy is just proportional to the natural logarithm of multiplicity given the following equation. Entropy equals Boltzmann constant times ln multiplicity. Of course, this applies to every possible physical event, but with one condition. The system should be isolated, meaning no energy should enter or leave it. This is because if the system is supplied energy, we can fact break the law of maximum multiplicity, but this is for another video. At first glance, randomness and disorder might seem like oversimplified terms to describe entropy, but you can look at it in this way. A disordered state refers to the high number of ways you can randomly arrange the system which is high entropy. That way, entropy gives us information about the system. If you want to learn more about such topics, subscribe for more. You can also check out our ebooks in the description, which has 30 more fascinating topics.